I know we kind of talk about him being a CEO, but honestly, the way he speaks now, it feels to me like he's selling this. Like it feels to me like this is the launch of our latest product. And he's got his black skivvy on and he's up the front of the big screen and he's saying all the positive things about this to the shareholders. That's my vibe. Now, you may see it differently. And if you do, tell me in the chat. But I I just get the sense he goes into salesman mode and I don't know who he's selling it to. It, it's a strange, mm. I, I find it peculiar, but let's have a look. The first part of this conversation goes for a couple of minutes and it's him just talking about the announcement and how fabulous it is. Well, it's certainly going to help 100,000 families of low and middle income workers that actually have really high early childhood education costs. It's a really fantastic announcement. It's designed to help them with the cost of living crisis. So we're really excited to be able to announce it. It's what we talk. It's like, you know, people who talk about being smart, the smartest people never have to tell people that they're smart. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. if someone who's doing the policy tells you how fantastic it is, is that kind of the same? like a dumb person trying to convince you that they're smart, that it's actually bad policy. Like if it's good policy, do you really need to tell everyone, hey guys, just so everyone knows, this is great policy. Yeah, are you aware? If you're not aware, be aware. This is great policy. Stupid. Talked about before the election campaign. We're just following through and delivering on what we said we'd do. You've just mentioned cost of living. Nicola Willis mentioned cost of living yesterday. She said, quote, so they can choose how to use it. She suggested a family outing. Isn't that inflationary? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I just say to you is it's really important. You've move? got families doing it incredibly tough, as you know. With just remember, more money in the economy is inflationary. They're giving the money straight to the adults who will go out. Now, it's interesting. I didn't catch Nicola Willis saying that. They might go on an outing. I thought this was for childcare. What? I, God, isn't this to pay for childcare? So they're, they're, the government already knows this is not going to go to childcare, it's going other places. Yes, and I know you can, from the same pool of money, but it sounds weird to say, yes, we're going to give you $75 a week for childcare that you can go on an outing with. What? It doesn't seem right. High levels of inflation, food prices, rents, mortgage rates, uh, early childhood education costs are amongst some of the highest in the OECD. Uh, this is going to help those families. And I think that's what's fantastic is that if you've got a family, you can get up to $75 per week uh, in, in subsidy on those early childhood up costs. To, that may be the difference between a partner choosing to go back to work or not. Uh, that may Okay, hang on. Sorry. You know how he says, I can relate? He said that about people losing their jobs. <laughs> he, he's now saying someone might choose to go back to work because the government is giving them up to $75 a week. Do you honestly every, ever, if, anyone every in the chat? three months. Tell me, I'm, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You get seven, it's $975 every three months. Is that really going to cause anyone to go, oh, go back to work now? What, or, or, or give up work, I should say. I'll give up work now. $975 every three months. Like, relatable much? Maybe not. It'd be the difference between someone taking on some extra hours. Um, that may, that will help those families a lot. We have seen, though, successive governments over the years uh, that have tried to work with childcare systems and subsidies in this country, that the companies every time simply hike their fees. And you were asked yesterday if you had had any reassurances from ch the childcare industry that they wouldn't just simply hike their fees. And for those people watching this clip, I said in a previous conversation, I spoke to someone who owns, co-owns three early childhood education without prompting. The first thing they said to me was, it'll finally give us a chance to raise our prices. So for people watching the clip tomorrow on YouTube, I know the rest of you who are watching us live have already heard this, but this is for them. The first thing they said to me without prompting was, finally, we'll be able to raise our prices. And I didn't hear that you were able to offer you'd had that reassurance. So how can you guarantee that the same thing won't just happen again? Well, look, I think there's several things. We've had several big, you know, had a big EC provider come out yesterday just saying, look, they want to be able to see this money get through to their parents. As you identified and as we've said yesterday, we have some of the highest early childhood education costs in the world. Looking for an uh, we're answer, do, Mr. There's Luxon. a couple of things going on. One is there's a lot of competition in the market. If parents ultimately don't like the EC provider and their rates, they will move. We do not expect ECE providers to, to, to increase their costs, uh, to on. increase their prices, because we actually... That they'll just move. They'll just move to another ACE provider. Yeah. As long as they have space. As mm -hmm. long as it is a, 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 within transport distance. You know, the bus. You're paying more for buses. You're paying more for fuel. You've you've 
it, it's just easy. Just just find another provider. But it's it's worse than that. There are places in New Zealand where basically out of the goodness of their hearts, people will run businesses at a loss because the local community can't afford to pay anything more. They can't afford to pay it. So those people are trapped by their by their whatever a good word for poorness is, by their lack of income. They can't go anywhere else. Mm. Now, they're also uh, proportionally quite high on the rankings of early childhood centres that are currently shutting down. Again, this is from my conversation with an EC owner today, right? So I, I grew up in Auckland, so I know Auckland, so I think South Auckland when I think about these areas. I don't know, South Dunedin, other areas around rural places where where finances are a bit more strapped. Um, that That... Parents don't pay anything because they can't afford to pay anything and the places run at a loss. Those parents can't just go, Duh, the service sucks. I'll go elsewhere. Again, this is the privilege of the wealthy to have that kind of attitude because what brings choice is finances. They always say that thing that money doesn't buy happiness. I kind of agree with that, although I have seen someone on a, on a jet ski. I've never seen someone grumpy on a jet ski. So money can bring that kind of happiness. But definitely what money does bring is choice choices in life and so to have someone say well they can just move elsewhere that's sort of a privilege or at least a unrelatability to people who don't have the financial ability to have that choice whether it's through what Chewy said whether it's through the area they live in there's only one and it's the last one left because all the other ones have shut down what why would chris luxon know about this by the way he hasn't raised his kids here he hasn't lived in new zealand for decades you know, he hasn't had to deal with any of this. This yeah. is why he's so blasé about it. He has no real world experience about the things that he's fucking talking about and the decisions that he's making for people that aren't like him, that don't have his privilege, that don't have his money, that don't have his fluidity to go on a whim. Oh, we'll just, we'll just do this. We'll just go to the the ECE that grows on a fucking tree down the backyard it would he's just made things more expensive harder in every single way for people that have less options he's yeah. never been in this position yeah that's right and that's why I said last night when I was talking about losing losing jobs he, he he doesn't relate he can be empathetic you can empathize but you can't relate if you have no ability or no experience of what that person, if you haven't walked a mile in those people's shoes, you can't relate. You can be empathetic, you can be caring, but you can't relate.